An exceptionally odd clean energy project backed by Bill Gates has broken ground near Rock River, Wyoming, where a wind turbine that turns convention on its head will get a chance to prove its remarkable claim, wind power at one-third of the cost. Offshore wind turbines continue to get bigger and taller, indeed, they're quite possibly the biggest machines that humanity has ever built with large moving parts. The 26 megawatts behemoth that Dongfeng Electric Corporation is building, for example, will have three blades, each about six times the width of a Boeing 747, attached to a nacelle towering 607 feet over the surface. As these gargantuan blades swing through the top of their circle, they'll top out at a 1,115 feet altitude, and this is where they'll generate peak power, because all else being equal, wind becomes stronger and steadier the higher you get from the surface, at least, when you're fairly close to the earth. And you can bet your bottom dollar somebody's working on a turbine with a diameter even bigger than Dongfang's 1,107 feet, because the bigger your turbine gets, the bigger the swept area reward becomes for adding another bit of length at the ends of the blades. So as energy giants like Dongfang tie themselves in knots to deal with the materials and logistics required by these mammoth wind turbines, it's truly odd to watch Wyoming company Heirloom going the opposite way. Heirloom's technology involves a bunch of 33 feet long vertical wings, attached to a cable, running around an oval-shaped track that's suspended about 82 feet off the ground on a series of poles. Those are the numbers for a 2.5 megawatt commercial scale version, anyway, thus far, the idea has only been tested at smaller scale. The blades change orientation as they turn around at the ends of the oval, angling themselves for optimal power as they run down the long side sections, and power takeoffs harvest the linear motion from the cable to run generators. There is absolutely no question, a traditional big, tall fan on a stick turbine will have better access to high quality wind. Heirloom's contention appears to be that this doesn't matter, because energy is a money in, money out game, and its gear will be so much cheaper to install than great big turbines that it will deliver energy at a lower overall cost. The 2.5 megawatt turbine setup I told you earlier, for example, could arrive on site loaded on a single truck, and you won't need a massive crane or one of these funky climbing cranes to install it. In 2023, the company was claiming that an heirloom setup would cost about a tenth of what a three-blade horizontal axis turbine of equivalent power does. Add in land, and a wind farm would be about a quarter the cost. Repairs and service would be a breeze, and much cheaper over the heirloom's 30-year service life than anything you need to do on top of a huge turbine tower. Thus, the all-important LCOE, or levelized cost of electricity figure would be around one-third as much as traditional wind, already one of the world's cheapest forms of energy. Well, I guess we'll see. After a pretty quiet couple of years, during which the company managed to pull in another 13-odd million dollars in funding and DoD contracts, Heirloom has now announced that it's broken ground on a research and development site, where it will build out its first utility-scale turbine. Annoyingly, the release gives precious little detail. Will this be the 50 kilowatt version with 10 feet wings, running around a 148 by 72 feet track with 16 feet tall towers they spec out, or the 250 kilowatts version? Heirloom isn't saying. Nor is the company saying when it will be ready to show off, other than that it expects to complete its pilot site build out ahead of commercial demos beginning in 2027. I guess this is one good thing about a nice super cheap idea, it ought to be super cheap to test. Not quick though, apparently. And we'll be very surprised if utility scale gets close to a megawatt in this instance. We were skeptical about this one in 2023, and we remain skeptical today, although not quite as skeptical as Clean Technica's Michael Barnard, who laid an absolute steamer on the idea back when it first came out of stealth. The investments involved, from companies including Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy and Chris Saka's Lower Carbon Capital, are relatively minor for the energy space and perhaps they reflect a similar skepticism among VCs. But we shall see, in just a few short years, 